Okay, we'll kind of let everyone filter in, but we can kind of start kicking things off. Um, welcome everyone to our first ever World Water Day celebration with the students of Carmen Ainsworth High School here in Flint, Michigan. Uh, my name is Allie Rose. I'm the founder of Genesee. We're a Flint-based company making circular economy eyewear from recycled single-use plastic water bottles. This month, we've teamed up with our friends over at Just Water to bring attention and give a platform to the youth of Flint to talk about water. Uh, most of you have probably heard about the Flint water crisis through the lens of the media, but we wanted to take today on World Water Day to start a conversation and amplify the only voices that really truly matter, and that is the community of Flint, and more specifically, the students who have been directly affected by the water crisis over these last eight years. Um, and I'd like to turn it over to Jessica Matthews. She's an English teacher from Carmen Ainsworth and helped organize all the students for this event. I personally met Jessica during a Zoom panel in February and was just so inspired by her story, activism, and the work that she's doing with the students to use their voice. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over you, to you, Jessica, to introduce yourself. Thank you, Allie Rose. My name is Jessica Matthews. As she stated, I'm a teacher at Carmen Ainsworth High School. I'm super excited to be here with you tonight because um, the students that will be speaking to you, one was my student last year, another one is my student this year, one is my former soccer player, and if things work out, I have one that's a junior who's on the way. So they're all my lovelies, and I absolutely adore that, and I'm so excited for them to do what they need to do today. Um, before everyone gets going, I want to remind everyone that it's day 2,253 with issues, struggles, and demands for justice connected with water from the Flint water crisis. Um, so our stories need to continue. What the importance of fighting for water for all people needs to continue. And I appreciate Just Water and Allie Rose for setting up platforms like this for young people to speak. Um, we need more platforms like this for young people because if they get a chance to talk to people from different states or around the world, they see that they're going to make a difference because young people are going to change the world. So I just hope that this can open up some other avenues for um, my young folks to talk to you about their feelings, not only about water, but about different issues that are affecting their lives. I'm gonna turn it right back to Allie. Thanks, Jessica. Now I'd like to introduce our two judges. We have Egypt Otis from Kama Bookstore right here in Flint, Michigan, and Kara Rubin from Just Water. Um, these students will be performing their creative writing pieces for you, and they'll be judged on idea, style, and presentation. Each performance, the judges will submit their scores of 1 through 10 for each category, and the winner will be announced at the end. Uh, the winner of today's event will receive a prize pack of three months of Just Water, a $150 gift card to Genesee Eyewear, a $40 gift card to Kama Bookstore, and a letter of recommendation for work or school. And although this is being framed as a competition, uh, every voice today matters and every single student is a winner for showing up, sharing their story, and using their voice. And we really hope that this is just the beginning of an ongoing conversation that will spark action and change. Um, I'd like to turn it over to Egypt to introduce herself. Hi everyone, I'm so very honored to be here in front of you all. I am a, like Ellie said, an owner of Comer Bookstore and Social Hub located downtown Flint where we specialize in black and brown literature, art and cultural focused events. It's very important to me to support the work of the creative arts. Um, Caught Comma is all about creating spaces to have important discussions and dialogues about critical issues that impact our community and especially um, impacting people of color specifically. And this is what, and this is exactly what this is about. So I'm really happy to hear the experiences of all of you. And much like Ali said, there are no winners and there are no losers here you are sharing a piece of your story. It's very important. I'm also very happy to be providing a gift card to our selected winner today for the um, event. So you'll get that shortly. And I'm gonna turn it back over to you, Allie. Thank you. Thank you, Egypt. Now I would like to introduce Kara Rubin from Just Water. Kara, take it away. Thank you, Allie. Thank you so much for having us be a part of 
this event. I'm also very honored to be here and to be um, a partner with Genuci and also to be able to support the community in Flint um, alongside them, even more so than, than uh, we have in the past. And um, just for those of you who aren't aware, is a uh, spring water source in uh, the Anirondack Mountains in upstate New York in partnership with a small community called Glens Falls. Um, and we bottle this water in that we source sustainably in a plant-based carton. So um, trying to alleviate some of the pressure that plastic is putting on our planet. And, um, you know, we're, we've been planning out some, uh, some fantastic initiatives alongside Genuci to, um, to really boost the, the common sustainability messaging that, that we both have. So really thrilled to be here tonight and very excited to hear the, um, the thoughts and perspectives and, and vision um, of the students who are presenting tonight. So thank you for having us. Thank you, Kara. So now we're gonna move on to the reason everyone came today for the students' performances. And I just wanted to give a little bit of context of the overall theme of 2021's World Water Day. It is valuing water. Water means different things to different people. And this conversation is about what water means to you. How is water important to your home and family life, your livelihood, your cultural practices, your well-being, and your local environment? By discussing all of the different ways water benefits our lives, we can value water properly and safeguard it effectively for everyone. We want these students to have the platform to tell us their stories, their thoughts, and feelings about water. And first up, we have Cleon Anderson. Cleon, take it away. And we do have a piece of artwork and image that Sparrow is going to screen share for us as well that Cleon did. Uh, good evening, everybody. Sorry for how I'm looking right now. I'm currently at work. Normally, I don't look like this. But um, just a little something that I had that I took from this project was we're going through a genocide. The city of Flint has been without clean water since April 2014, and yet many many have suffered and yet have uh, uh, excuse me, or worse, die from high levels of lead found in the pipes in which it, sort, it sorted its way into our water. 60% of water makes up the adult human body, which to me is a lot. Now think about how long your body could go without water. The body can't live without water for a total of eight to 21 days, and yet Flint has been without clean water for a total of seven years, and a total of 90 plus people have died and 12 plus have gotten sick and fell ill to the water poisoning. I just, want to, I just want you to ask yourself, how much longer are you okay with knowing people are still trying to live and are suffering system, systemically and oppressed from the government, the government's decisions that aren't centering the peoples? It's only with such, a, excuse me, only with such, such as myself and, hope, and a hopeful community, uh, excuse me, community trying its best efforts to turn the situation around and that our community leads our activists and we, our activism, sorry. not only our activists, but our community to lead and to uh, coming together and solve this American issue and make our future for, make a future better for not only the adults, but our youth as well. And together prosper and strive for a better future. Sorry about that, guys. That was wonderful, Cleon. And no need to apologize. We appreciate that you're taking the time out to even while you're working, share your voice. I think that is really important. So no need to apologize. Next, we have up uh, Taryn Spear. Taryn, take it away. Um, so I picked to write a song because that's just how I connect to stuff more. Like I connect through music. So I wrote a song. Suffering for 
four years, they didn't even get clear. Even after the tears, said I wanna be here. Makes you think when's my last drink is endless, thirsty fear. Then I sing my final thing is slow but not sincere. Water should be clean, then why is it hurting me? My bottles a day will never be the same. Water should be clean, then why is it hurting me? My bottles a day will never be the same. That was it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Taryn. Next up, we have Tanaya. Tanaya, take it away. And also Sparrow will be screen sharing a piece of artwork that she did as well. Okay, so basically, um... When I first heard about the Just Water project, I was kind of hesitant to draw anything or just do anything at all because that's kind of what Flint got shrunk down to was the water crisis. Um, whenever you ask somebody like, oh, like, where are you from? Then they'll say their city. And then like, they're like, oh, where are you from? You're like, I'm from Flint. And then the first thing they say is like, oh, like, how's the water? And it's just kind of like, oh, like, you know, but um, it really, after a while, like it took me a minute and then it really motivated me to draw it because if you really think about it, Flint is a predominantly black community. So when you see things like this happening, you have to like, you know, you like you just kind of think to yourself, like, would this have been fixed faster if it was a different community that was affected? Like if it was Grand Blank, would like, would we still, would it still be seven years without clean water? So that's why I um, drew the Black Fist as well, because we all know Black people are also suffering from many other problems. Um, as you can see on the hand too, the index finger is painted yellow. The fingernail is painted yellow because the index finger and the color yellow are both signs for hope. So there's still hope that we can um, pass this epidemic and get clean water. Thank you, Tanaya, for sharing and drawing this amazing piece of art. Um, we're really happy we, that you did decide to participate and even just sharing your personal hesitation, I think is really important. Like that's what this platform is really all about. And you have the opportunity to let people know what Flint really is and that it is so much more than the water crisis. Um, and it's, you know, opportunities like this where we can start conversations and really amplifying the voice of Flint and the youth so that people can see what it is truly about and rebranding this city. So thank you for speaking up and, and sharing this with us. Um, Jessica, we have one more student, Jalen. I know he was running a little bit behind, but we can hold off for a couple minutes if we think he is still gonna be able to join us. I did send him a message um, for everyone else. Jalen had a family emergency, so he had to run to check on his grandmother and then he was trying to get home. So I haven't got an update at this point. Um, and I also would love to just take a moment to say, um, it, it was a little difficult <laughs> for, I know it was really hard for all these kids to get things done because they're caught in the middle of a pandemic and the end of a marking period and all kinds of insane things right now. So I, I give mad respect to all three of them for putting in the work to use their creative voices the way that they did. Um, because they found a way despite with all that's going on. So celebrating all three of the kiddos, my kiddos today. Um, and I don't see Jalen at the moment. So if I get a message, I will hop in the chat and let you know. Okay. Well, that's uh, Kara. Do you want to? I was just going to say, do we want to give him a chance to record it later? And then we can, you can send it to us maybe. I can offer that for him. We can definitely yeah. do that. And if we want to wait off on judging until we receive that and we can announce something maybe on social later this week. I know that is a turn of events from what we had planned, but want to make sure we give every student the opportunity to share and participate if that's okay with everyone else. I think Jalen would totally be like, okay, with just saying like I shared out. That's just his personality. Okay. Um, he's, he's just one of those kids that he, he has lots to say. So, um, he would appreciate just having the space to do that. 
Cool. Um, I don't know if he would want to take away the shine from the other three because they they had to sacrifice their times like Cleon sitting in here with his work gear on. So <laughs> I definitely want to respect the three that were here tonight as well. I'm sure he would be very comfortable with just being able to share with everyone in this space and say okay. like he did what he needed to do. Cause I think it's more of his voice than a prize to be completely honest. And I'm sure it's the same thing with the other three that are here. Excellent. Well, if we want to give the judges a second to email their scores over and while those are kind of being tallied up, um, I want to pass the mic over to, we have Lisa Graham from the Community Foundation of Greater Flint, Flint Kids Fund. Uh, and just so everyone knows, for the month of March, Genesee and Just Water have been teaming up to raise funds for the Flint Kids Fund. Uh, if you go to justwater.com for the month of March, you can round up on any purchase you make, and that money will be donated to the Flint Kids Fund and just will be matching those roundup donations as well for the month of March. And all purchases at genesee.com using code JUSTFLINT will receive $10 off their first purchase for the customer and $10 will be donated to the Flint Kids Fund. And as two brands that are focused on sustainability, we don't want to encourage overconsumption and would also encourage you to donate directly to the fund at flintkids.org. I'm going to pass the mic over to Lisa. So good to see you so that she can share more about why this fund is so important and what it's doing for Flint Kids. Thank you, Haley Rose. And thank you to all of you very talented young individuals. You are all so brave and so kind to share your talents. We appreciate that about you. Um, I, I'm Lisa Graham, I'm with the Community Foundation of Greater Flint, but I'm also the parent of a child who was exposed to the lead in his drinking water when he was three years old. So from the time he was three until he was five, he was exposed. And so I have a firsthand knowledge of what lead in drinking water does to children. Um, my child was, uh, he had to be held back in second grade because he couldn't read. Um, and he also has problems with his memory. Um, and he's very lucky to, uh, well, he does not live in Flint. So he was not uh, exposed to the water every single day, only while he was at daycare. So if this is what happened to my son, um, that is why I'm such a strong supporter of the Flint Kids Fund, because I know the Flint Kids Fund will be there to support children as they um, look for services to help mitigate the impact of the lead that have had on their lives. Uh, the um, Foundation for Flint, uh, which houses the, the Flint Child Health and Development Fund, or the Flint Kids Fund, uh, has uh, been around since 2016. So this is the fifth anniversary of the fund and uh, we have awarded more than uh, 11 million dollars in grants to help mitigate the um, effects that the lead poisoning has had and I think that Sparrow shared on the um, chat the website where you can go to the Flint Kids Fund and there'll be a listing of all of the areas um, that have been supported by the generous contributions of individuals from uh, all throughout the world. Um, we've got uh, military individuals who have supported the, the fund, um, all 50 states, there, it's all around the world. Um, but uh, that I think that that shows um, our children that they're not alone, that um, these, uh, these supports um, are going to be around uh, to help them and um, I, so the, the water crisis started in 2000, April of 2014. I think it was Cleon who said that. And um, so if you think about that, we have our, our zero to eight year olds. So those kids are now, <laughs> they're now seven, eight, nine, ten, 10. And as we go through, Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, as we go through um, watching these children 
uh, progress, we have no idea what's going to happen. And that's why we're so grateful for Allie Rose and her continuous generosity and getting the word out um, about the Flint Kids Fund. And we thank uh, Kara and we <laughs> thank Alex. And we're just uh, so thankful to have all of you supporting the children of Flint. And Bonnie, thank you. Cleon, Tyron. And then who else was, who else spoke? Tanaya, is that how you pronounce your name? Great. And then Egypt, as always, thank you for, for all that you do for our community. Um, we're still waiting for the scores to be tallied up. Um, if our judges could make sure that they send that email over to Alex. And I have a question that someone from New York sent um, who's tuning in. And this is for the students, if you guys are comfortable answering this. Um, she said, my question for the change makers is if you could help America see Flint for more than the last few years of the crisis surrounding water, what would it be and why? I don't know if any of you guys would be comfortable sharing that, but we would love to hear from you and take this moment. Um, Um, honestly, I would say just look at the people in it instead of the city itself, because we have so many talented musicians, so many pro basketball players, football players that come from here. So it's really like that one situation is really overshadowing that we are really a city of a lot of talented and gifted people. That's how you know you're my best friend, because I was going to say the same thing, but Yes, I agree. Like once, once I guess it's the simple, I think, excuse me, but once you take a look at the city, I guess doing a comparison, like I, like I was talking to, I was talking to one of my friends about like comparing Flint back then to now and like seeing the change and wanting to change. It, it starts with getting a, not only just an idea, but having, putting those actions, like those steps behind that idea. So yeah. Um, I have to say, like, I don't really have much to say. I just wanted to say, like, I agree with Tanaya and Cleon because, like, they basically just said it all. So. Thank you guys for speaking up and, and sharing that. We really appreciate it. Um, and give us one second. We're just making sure we get everything tallied up. Egypt, were you able to send over your judging notes? I don't know why it's not coming through on email. I'm about to send it right now as we speak. Oh, you're fine then. I just wanted to make sure we weren't overlooking anything. And also just want to take a moment. Um, I was thinking of Jessica today. They, uh, their school is preparing for parent-teacher conferences tomorrow. And I have a lot of other friends who work as teachers and in education. Um, this past year has been a lot for everyone, students, teachers, educators in general, and really just want to give a moment to say thanks for anyone who's tuning in and to Jessica, um, who is really spearheading the unknown and I'm sure just figuring it out as, as we all go along, but it, we do acknowledge, recognize, and appreciate this weight that um, you have all carried with such grace in, in leading the students and making sure that they feel safe during this challenging year and, and have a safe space. So thank you. Thank you for that. And I would say love on a teacher, <laughs> please. We need to make it till June, and um, I think it's essential just to let teachers know, like, just hearing Allie just say, thank you for doing a good job or doing your best, that probably is what gets me through to do tomorrow. So if you could just show love, appreciation to a teacher, 
because those words are what carry us through to keep doing what we need to do and helping world changers like the crew that are here tonight. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Give us another minute. We're getting everything tallied up. The, the fun of technology. And then we will announce our winner. And as we mentioned before, um, you know, all of you are winners. And I did just get a note from Kara from Just Water. All three of you will be receiving um, some surprise packs from Just Water. So congratulations to all of you guys on, on that. And we'll follow up, um, you know, after this to get all of your shipping details. But um, know that you have that coming on the way. And our winner is Taryn Spear. Thank you. Taryn, do you want to give your little acceptance speech? Oh, whoops. Um, <laughs> I just want to say um, thank you in that it did take a lot out of me to like be able to express myself through music because I have stage fright. But I think that it was a really good experience and it was really cool. Well, um, I think you did an amazing job. You didn't seem nervous at all. And that song was really moving. Um, and I'm, I'm proud of you for choosing to perform it live because she had sent a video and had wanted it to be played. So bravo for stepping outside of your box. And so we're going to wrap everything up a little early. And I just want to say a final thank you um, to everyone who helped organize this, the students, Jessica, our judges, Egypt, and Kara. Um, and thank you to Just for just being a really supportive partner in using our platforms to shine a light on these amazing students and change makers. Um, thank you all for tonight and joining us and we will be recording Well, this event was recorded and it'll be posted on YouTube and IGTV later this week. So if you have anyone who couldn't attend, you can share it with them um, and let's just uh, continue the conversation. I hope this is the first of many events like this where we can continue to talk amongst ourselves, but also get people outside of Flint involved in the conversation and let's be moved to action in finding solutions for our community and the world at large so that we can continue to value water. Thank you guys. Thank you everyone. You did a wonderful job. All of you did a wonderful job and thank you for sharing your stories, sharing your experiences, being vulnerable enough to share it as well because these are things that you've encountered. They're very traumatic things that you've encountered. So thank you. Thank you from us too. This has been fantastic and I look forward to doing it again. Thank you, Jessica, too, for making it happen and, and uh, inspiring your students. It's beautiful. Great job, guys. Good luck at work, Cleon. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, Tanaya. Bye, Taryn, Lisa, Bye. Bonnie. Thank you all. Thank you.